Anybody out there? Yes, I have contact to you. I can hear you. I can hear you. That's good. <clears throat> I'm coming from Denmark. I know you are. <laughs> and I'm coming from California. Okay, yes. So I, 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 hope, uh, I hope we'll have a, a, a large group. Sure. Hello there, everyone. Hi, Allison. Hi. Hello. Hey, Steve. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, and, and Debbie, you're not Debbie. You're Gordon, aren't you, Cot? De <laughs> <laughs> Gordon and Debbie, yes. I'm going to fix that. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Um, and Bent, Michael, is that what it is? That's me, yes. Nice to meet you. And where are you from? See, I'm coming from Denmark. And normally, I'm coming to the skiing in Europe. OK, no? wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you uh, on with us today. And I have, been, uh, I have been skiing in, in uh, Canada before. I've been in, in uh, Lake Placid from skiing. Yes. Oh, sure. Wonderful. That's so far away from the, the place this year. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Irene, nice to see you. You're you're active with the European group, right? Yes. So I'm personally from Germany, and I'm the secretary of ISFR in Europe. Okay, wonderful. That's nice. Yes. So yes. certainly we had to cancel our ski week this year in Switzerland, but we will mm -hmm. do it probably the in 2023. Okay. And next year. We have also already our plans, so we will have an equal meeting in March, and then we can inform everybody where we will go. Okay. So that will it be in Switzerland in, in next year? No, next year, most probably it will be in Roccarasso between Naples and Rome in Italy. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. That's interesting. Yes. We That's come. when we were supposed to be this year, right? Uh, yes, first it was supposed to be this year. And then last year, the, you know that in Italy, um, they have been in a great mess mm -hmm. regarding the virus. So uh, we changed to Switzerland. But now also Switzerland is not possible in that situation. So no. No. unfortunately. Wonderful. Are there open some, some places oh. in Switzerland for the Swedish person to ski? Yes, yes. In, in Austria and in Switzerland, uh, they have open, not the okay. restaurants, but they can go skiing. That's okay. And um, yeah, but we in Germany cannot go out no. for skiing. No. So we are in a lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Um, I see Neil Berg from. Uh, Calgary. Hi, Neil. And Hi, Hannah. everyone. Oh. Hi. That's Eddie hey. is from uh, Durango, Colorado. He is on our board of directors. And Hello. Peter is on our board. Hello. Good to see you. Ah, Wendell from uh, Sun Valley. Yes, how are you? Good. Good to see you again. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, we do have 70 people uh, that RSVP to join us today. So Good. I may not get to say hello to everyone, but <laughs> kind of fun to, uh, to see names pop up there. Um, I see Melissa, um, who's on our board of directors, and Lynn Beck. Hi. Wonderful. And I saw Debbie Cox in the picture there. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you. Ah, the Curtises are on. Hello, hello, Jimmy. Hey, Allison. Good to see jo you. John's Thank here. You so much. Oh, John, there's a whole bunch of people here already. <laughs> He's late. He's late. <laughs> oh. 
Hi, Steve. Hi, Scott. Hey, Lynn, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, are you in Telluride? There's Marilyn, too. Are you both in Telluride? In Telluride. Lots of snow. What's going, keeps... What's going on in the mountain up there? Um, I mean, guys that keep getting snow. They've had like two feet in the last week or so. Yeah. Uh, uh, are all the facilities open? They're, most of them are open. Sometimes they, some of the restaurants on the mountain aren't, depending on their staffing problems because if anybody has COVID. Um, yeah. But this past week, again, was pretty busy, I guess, because of the long weekend. I hope well, so. we got everything open right now. Even the downtown the restaurant is open now. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. Hi. Yeah, the, in town, the restaurants are open. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, but not very good. A little, little quiet, but... No, I can't. I am not on. You are. I wore my I hear you. badge in case anybody forgot what we look like. I found mine, Marilyn. <laughs> I'm surprised people got on early. This is good. Where's yeah. Allison? Well, it's only one minute early. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you're right. Oh, uh, there's Albert. And Russell. Karen Sebzi, can you allow me to sh share my screen, please? Well, the good news, I had a second vaccine shot last Saturday. So uh, I am the, almost to the finish line. I have, I have mine tomorrow. Hello? Does anybody hear me? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. My wife's done. That's good. Nice. <coughs> Is Allison somewhere? I am. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. her. Oh, I didn't see her. Go. My macular. Oh, uh, Teresa's here. Nice to see you. And the Honorable Jeffrey Penza, our foundation president. Um, I see uh, Donna Potter from Canmore. Good. And Russell from Australia. Hi, Russell. Good night. Hi. Hi. It took a while for the sand to come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's Bill Bell from North Carolina and Margaret from the UK. Ah, and we have Hugh online from the Rotary Club of Bayonne. Hello, how are you oh, doing? Good. good, so glad you joined us. Oh, well, how close is it up in going van? To. <laughs> well, we could if we uh, want. Yeah. I wasn't too sure if I was going to listen because I had a bit of eye surgery this morning, but I'm fine for the meeting, so good. happy to be here. How yeah, cold is it in Banff now? Well, skiing is awesome, and you know, we had a really weird, well, I'm glad it got postponed, and we're looking forward to next year, because conditions are just fantastic right now. That's what my son says. He lives in Carpen, and he's at Norway. Yeah. And he said it's been fantastic when he's gone with his kids every weekend. And, and, and the snow is nice and compact now and well done i'm not compact but settled because we had a big earthquake the other day so we're good really <laughs> didn't you hear the news oh there was a small earthquake the other night so we all got excited it doesn't happen too often here but that was a just a little four point something was it only in banff or was it all around the whole area it, it hit uh, five kilometers north of banff uh, I was on Cascade, which is next to Norway. Okay. I'll send you some videos of what they recorded. It's a large boom, is what it was. And yeah. I was at an event in town, and the whole floor shook. And anyway, it was a talk of the town for the last couple of days. <laughs> Life is good. No, no damage. Nothing. No damages. Everything is great. Oh, We're good. Allison, can you take the screen share off so we can see the faces? 
Are you not seeing them? Everybody no. Seeing them. no, we, we it's all on screen share. We can only okay. see six. Hold on. Well, you won't see you, you won't see, see me today. Our annual meeting. Mm. Okay, hold on. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Hold on. Hmm. Nice to see who's talking. Also the president. You sure it's not on your? You think she's <laughs> set up? Uh, that's me with my uh, new eyeball. <laughs> oh, nice. I'll uh, <laughs> shut that off, though. It's a little straight <laughs> Oh, dear. Marilyn, is you sure it's not a setting on your? All I, all I have is me and Allison over on the right side, and her screen share covers the whole screen. I can't see anybody. Uh, yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. There you go. You can swing okay. to the left. You can see hey, Margaret. Hi, Margaret. There we go. We got, we got everybody. Can you hear us, Margaret? Yes, I can. Everybody. Uh, I'm nice to see you. Face. Margaret, hi. Hi. <laughs> Come on, oh, me show your tops of your heads. If you change your screen a little bit or pull your screen toward you, then we can see you. We demand it. <laughs> hey, Tressa. <laughs> I should tell the group uh, a story about when we were in Sun Valley, uh, how uh, uh, coming out there, I flew to Salt Lake and stayed with a guy to ski in Salt Lake for yeah. a week. His name is Dr. David Klassen. He's the leading expert on infectious diseases in the world. And it's unbelievable that this would not have happened except for I came to Sun Valley to ski with all you guys. And so we were, that Saturday when I flew in to Salt Lake, I was sitting on his back porch and he says, do you want to hear about this virus? And I, cause he got me to wear a mask from Sun Valley to Salt Lake. And um, we had a two hour, three hour discussion. And I said, how much does the White House know? <laughs> he says, they know but not as much as you do. And I said, well, I have a guy that just moved into the White House, the number two guy uh, in the National Security Council under Robert O'Brien. And I said, can we call him? We had a two hour discussion that Saturday. And, uh, and the next day, the US has never canceled flights from uh, another country ever. And the next day, they we know that there were a lot of people listening to our uh, conversation. And by the way, I had nothing to uh, add to that conversation. I was the right person at the right place, had the right connections. But it was because of going to Sun Valley, coming into Salt Lake with the, not, the top guy in infectious diseases in the world that they canceled flights that Sunday. That was when the, the uh, U.S. canceled flights to China. And so I told David, I said, you know what? We probably saved hundreds of thousands of lives just for that because the U.S. has never done that before. But David, being the expert that he is, you can Google him, David Klassen. Uh, that changed the, the U.S. posture where they canceled all those flights from China. That was the start. Bill, can you remember what day that was? I remember what we left Sun Valley. What was it, a Saturday? Yes. Yeah, Saturday. Yeah, and then uh, and when I arrived at, at, in Salt Lake, we were sitting on his back porch. David Smith, the CDC, he's a point person for Biden, really, on this disease. His credentials are better than Fauci's. And uh, anyways, he work, works for the labs. He told me the whole story that this virus came from um, the SARS virus that was stored in Canada. Now this you have not read, but it was uh, in 2003 when the uh, SARS went from China to uh, Canada, it never made it to the US. And the Canadians kept the virus in a lab so that they could find a cure in case it would come back. And the uh, Chinese went into that lab last a year ago from fall stole the virus. There are Chinese people in jail in Canada 
that you have not read about, took <laughs> it back to this military lab in Wahoon and uh, put it in, uh, made it more dangerous than the SARS virus. That's the real story behind it. And um, anyways, it leaked out of the lab. They did not expect it to leak out of the lab. But because I was in Sun Valley and, uh, and got the whole uh, story and got the White House on board, it changed everything after that where they started canceling flights. So the hey, Allison, let's bring the meeting to order. All right. But anyways, I thought y'all be interested to hear that. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, we are going to call this meeting to order and I am going to share my screen again with all of you. Um, all right. Well, I am so excited to have so many people here today. Um, we had about 70 people register RSVP that they were uh, hoping to join us. Um, I know it's all different times of the of the day, depending on where you are. Um, I apologize for those of you that are up at the crack of dawn and almost half asleep and ready to crawl into bed. So, um, but here in Iowa, where I am, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's just about perfect um, for me. But uh, I, I appreciate you all joining us. And um, I am Allison Walter. I am the uh, current uh, president of the International Skiing Fellowship of Rotarians. And I uh, am a past president of the Rotary Club of Ames in Ames, Iowa. So um, excited to see a lot of new faces here today. Um, some some names that I recognize, and uh, uh, it's good to put a, a name and a face uh, together. So let's see here. So with that, um, a, a welcome and an official call to order. Um, we do have uh, one past president on uh, the line with us. Al Morris is on. If you want to just wave, Al, that would be great. Um, I know that Richard Geis had RSVP, but I don't see his name. Richard, are you here? All right. Um, we have a number of our board members on. Um, and uh, so I just thought it would be good, again, to put names and faces together. Um, Al Morris is our international uh, past president, as I just introduced. Uh, Lynn Beck is our secretary treasurer. She's in Telluride. Uh, John Curtis is our um, newsletter editor, uh, board member. He's in uh, Killington, Vermont. Abby O'Neill is our international Pre uh, vice president for the Caribbean, Central, and South America. Uh, she is in uh, British Virgin Islands, Portola. Uh, Margaret Hutchinson is on with us. She's our international VP for the United Kingdom, uh, Rotary Club of Manchester. I'm doing this all from memory. I hope I don't uh, screw it up too much. Uh, now I'm in trouble. Uh, Melissa Hebbard is uh, our international president or vice president from Australia. Uh, Peter Bergler is our international VP for Europe. Uh, David Hoyt, I don't know if David's on with us. Um, he is a board member. Eddie Chang is a board member. He's from Durango, Colorado. And Marilyn Branch is on. She's a board member and she's from Telluride. So uh, that is our board of directors. And I, again, want to thank them for their continued service. Um, we go. Uh, a few months at a time without a lot of communication and then all of a sudden we have all kinds of things to do and um, they, they've been very, um, very helpful and this year and I definitely appreciate their uh, participation. So the last time we were all together was in Sun Valley, Idaho. 
um, as you just heard, just before the, uh, the major outbreak of the coronavirus. We had about 85 people from four different countries in our group in Sun Valley. Um, we had participants of all ages. We had a large contingency of uh, 20 something sons and daughters, which was kind of fun. I think they had a great time. Um, we had a family that had their three and five year old boys with them. And we had uh, Ben Lawton with us. I think he's probably our oldest here these days. Um, so we, uh, yeah, is that right, Ben? Uh, have you hit 90? I can't remember. I, I think you've hit 90 already. So we, got, we span all the ages. And a great time was had by all. Um, Typically in this meeting, uh, we report on the things that the actions of the board that have uh, taken place over the course of the last year since we were last together. Um, when we were in Sun Valley, we announced that uh, our intent was to uh, go to Banff for uh, 2021. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, visit Banff and tour the facilities and um, meet with local Rotarians. And uh, after that, I um, proposed to our executive committee and um, we confirmed the dates for our 2021 ski week. Uh, it would have been January 23rd through the 30th in Banff, Alberta. We signed a contract and made a, a, made a deposit. Um, in June, we found out that with the change of the RI Connection convention to a virtual format, that we would have the opportunity to do a free virtual booth to share fellowship information. So I did um, put some information together, put it online, uh, some photos and membership information. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say we had a moderate amount of traffic at our booth. We had several Rotarians reach out um, for more information uh, or sign up for membership um, or just sign up to be on our email list uh, for future information. Uh, then in August, after communicating with the full board, the executive committee canceled the 2021 ski week um, due to travel restrictions in Canada and, as well as many other countries. Um, so that was unfortunate, but uh, the, the appropriate decision. Um, and then in November, um, I, we signed a new contract with the Banff Park Lodge for 2022. Um, the dates were confirmed for February 26th through March 5th. And uh, the, the resort was um, kind enough to honor the room catering and event space rates for 2022 that they had initially quoted for 2021. So I think we are getting a pretty good deal when it comes to next year. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Yes. You said what dates again? February 26th through March 5th. You know, that's the best time of year to come anyway. That's awesome. Good, good. Thanks, you. Know, I best, appreciate that. It's the best, the best weather, best snow, much warmer temperatures than, say, late January. Yep. That's then, not why we looked at that date because we yeah. had heard that okay. was better. And I'm just saying that, that I'm members, excited. So. That's good. Thank you. Good call. Good. Um, Rotary International reached out to all fellowships um, in late November, um, urging, uh, more than urging, requiring every uh, in, uh, uh, fellowship to comply with the Rotary brand standards with our logo and our um, other communications. So um, our old uh, logo that had the Rotary wheel with the skis um, did, not in, did not keep with the integrity of the Rotary wheel. So uh, we, I worked with the design team at Rotary International they gave us a few options to, um, to review and choose from. Um, the, the, 
the board members uh, gave a little bit of input. Uh, the logo was put out to the membership via uh, Facebook for people to vote on. And um, we uh, selected the uh, logo that you see there at the bottom of the screen. Um, now, of course, having a new logo and um, Rotary brand standards, we also had to then update our website. So um, since then a number of uh, changes were required, I took it upon myself to revamp the website entirely. It is now mobile responsive. Um, it's more accessible, more informative. And um, according to the notes from Margaret, far more attractive. So um, I hope that uh, you noticed that when you got on to uh, to register for today's meeting. Um, if you haven't had a chance, take a look around. Um, I, we tried to add some more um, short copy and some photos. Um, and I think uh, at this point, there's a little bit more information to be added, but we're at a pretty good spot um, right now with that new website. Um, we also renewed our liability insurance policy for 2021. Uh, same company that we've been with for a number of years. And we worked with them to uh, drop the event portion of the coverage for 2021 since we are not having a ski week. And so there was some significant savings um, uh, at that, with that expense. It was $750 this year versus uh, $1274 US uh, last year. Now, of course, that'll go back up next year with the ski week, but nice to be able to work with them and um, it cut some of our expenses. Now with that, we have our annual financial report. Um, this is the balance sheet that was um, submitted by our treasurer for the board's review um, and presentation today. Um, Lynn, anything that you'd like to comment here on, the, on this page? On this page, no, this is the, basically the amount of cash at year end that was in our bank accounts, which is a lot lower than other years due to the fact that we didn't have, normally we're collecting the money in one year and spending in the next, so we have a large balance. Um, this year is different because we never, we canceled before we started collecting any money, and so we didn't have anything to refund, so it's basically mostly the money's from over the years of the dues that are pretty much sitting in that account. And that's what makes up this amount. Okay. And then our p l for 2020. And that's the one that I want to explain because it looks weird, but it has to do with when we collect the money. Um, so it looks like we have a real big negative income and it's not really that, it's that we in 20, we paid for the Sun Valley, but we had collected and ended in 2019 with a very large balance. And so this is just a function of without an activity of a ski week that we did only had very little expenses. And we have about 10 to 12,000 of expenses, um, basically with the website, with the insurance and different things normally, and then, as you can see, the ski week expenses is like was 34,000 we had spent um, from 19. So it's a little confusing and I didn't want anybody to think we really had this big amount that we were in deficit. So this is not the case. Right. Does anybody have any questions? Um, how did we do um, uh, from last year? Was the Sun Valley did we um, at least break even? Yeah, we did. That's what because we pretty much broke even. All the, the money came in in 2019 and paid in 2020. And um, the big payment that we had was like for 32,000 um, for Sun Valley. And then we actually, in regards to what we have to pay to hold the time, in Banff, we only had to make a deposit of $1,800. And most of the times when we've in advance made a 
beginning payment, it's been quite a bit more. So that helped our basically um, where we were at too. Hey, Len, that's a Eddie. Uh, we don't have a, you don't show the income of the Sun Valley here. So because the Sun Valley, the reason that's what I explained, the Sun Valley money came in in 2019. Okay, because we collect it through the whole um, summer and fall, and only very little, if you look at only got 870 more dollars in that was for um, from the event, everybody paid before the end of 19. Yeah, but but it's right, right now it's already 2021. So, so you but don't have all the income. You don't have all the income. In, we don't have well, a. We didn't collect the event. We had no event because we canceled early enough. We didn't collect any income towards BAMP for the trip that was supposed to be this year. We will start in probably in June collecting money for the trip that will be in 22. Hmm. It, but 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 we have a Spencer you show to Sun Valley, but we don't have an income show Sun Valley. Well, it's kind of a little. The income, though the income was in the year before. It, it basically we ended the year, and I don't have a copy right with me, but when I can get you a copy, we ended nineteen with a big balance because we were paying the thirty two thousand out in twenty. Hmm. Well, it just looks me a little scary, you know, the way how yeah. they. Well, they that's why work. I was. That's why I was trying to explain it because it looks weird, but it isn't. The we and actually it's, have. It's like this quite often because we take registrations in the fall and and through the end of the year, and then we have our event right after the first of the year. So um, we 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 run into this quite often. What do you get for this? Well, we, we should put it in a liability account. I can show you how to do that. And it'll be a lot cleaner. Well, I had it in a liability at the end of last year, in the last year's, um, because it was a liability. It was something that we were holding to pay. Why don't, why don't we just produce, why don't we just produce a report April to April in the future, you know, as an informational well, thing. Well, the so problem is our, our year, our year for doing reports and stuff is a, oh, we, we can do that as an informational yeah, exactly. thing, but it is, oh, yeah, we could do that. We could do that basically because right now we, in another, it will be, we usually start early June, July, the first time we start seeing any funds come in that's for the next year's. Um, so it is always a liability and, um, then when you go back to the um, assets and liability, we've shown the insurance that we paid, the payment was basically um, the 750. It looks like it's flaring by the LED. Yeah. I put All that right. on my badge there. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That there. somebody. What? Somebody needs to mute themselves if we've got some conversation going on in the background. Uh, Neil, did you have a question or a comment? Yeah, please, uh, Allison, uh, uh, through to Lynn. Can you, you've got uh, Sun Valley expenses at 32,795. Do you have an idea of what the uh, uh, Sun Valley revenue was, even though that was- I don't have it, I can get that. I don't have it right ball, now. I, ball, yeah, but I get that. Um, the, usually we, we we're pretty close. Okay, cool. We do this as a break even um, event. We, we only charge what it costs us. So, yeah. um, very, t you know, uh, I thought maybe I'd had it right here in my yeah, notebook. We don't, when we price, when we price the amount that we're charging per person, we're not pricing to really get any extra money. We're just pricing it to get the coverage and um, to pay, basically is to pay the meals and to pay the insurance and to pay um, any other events that we have going on that we had to do for setup costs and things like that. Um, and so far over the years that I've been doing this and I think and before, we price pretty good close to 
what it costs. We don't come out with extra. The dues money of the $35 is where we at least collect a little bit for the normal yearly expenses that we have. I think oh, wow. so, excuse me, the way I understand the report Lynn is presenting, it's a combination of cash and financial report. In order to make it uh, like a balance sheet, you need to do, you have to do accruals and liabilities. But the way Lynn is presenting that, it's the cash side. That's why it's always off because she cuts off at December 31st. In order to present it differently, she had to do a restatement. But I think we all understand what the mechanics is behind that. Yeah. I mean, it looks fine. It's always, the income is a, bit, a year earlier and the expense is, late, is later. It's always the same discussion. We yeah. could fix that with accruals and liabilities. And then I think it would be fine. Uh, yeah. Is it worth the, the work? I don't know. All right. Um, another question that I saw pop up in the chat is was about um, our own insurance. Um, no, we cannot piggyback on Rotary International insurance yeah. policy. Um, we are a separate organization, um, and I don't remember quite how it reads on our website, but if you look at the bottom, we are um, we are affiliated with Rotary International, but we are not um, like a Rotary Club. Um, we are a separate organization, and so we cannot use their insurance policies. And that has... That question has come up and unfortunately it is not an option for us. But thanks for asking Debbie or Gordon. All right. Thanks for your, for your uh, report, Lynn. And um, we will look at some maybe other ways to report this in the future so that we can um, cut down on some of the confusion. Well my suggestion would be is once we're close to the beginning of the um, event and have an idea of what we collected, we could send out a preliminary report, which, you know, for information purposes. And then after the meeting, the ski week, send out another report when we've paid all of ski week so that people can see that, which would probably be probably a April with right. to be able to do that. So I can put that down to try to do that this coming year next year when we do the next one okay thank you all right um and a few uh items for follow-up after this year's annual um board meeting that we were um uh planning that we have plans for the rest of the year um as far as our nominating committee um we did not make changes in the board this year. Um, we felt like the fact that uh, we weren't having uh, a, a ski week um, would just, everyone agreed to take on one more year. And um, so next year when, when we're all together, um, we hope to be able to, to look at that a little bit close, more closely. But if you are interested, we are very, um, happy to have you join us um, and we'd love to, to hear of your interest. Um, the way our uh, board is set up, we can have quite a large board. Um, the, the countries or the representation has changed a bit uh, over the years, depending on where we've had a level of interest. Um, but we do not currently have an international VP from Canada, Northern Asia, uh, the Orient Korea, uh, the Middle East, the Orient Japan, and or Southeast Asia. Um, I have seen uh, some nice uh, interest this year in the last few weeks from Canada. So perhaps someone would be um, interested in getting involved at a board level. Um, I've also had uh, some nice interest from Japan, um, and uh, 
some people wanting to get more involved in that regard. So um, please, please consider if you're interested in, in getting involved with the board, please let us know. Allison, uh, where is the Northern Asia? Is it China? You had a Northern Asia and, and South Southeast Asia. Asia. And I, I can't, I can't tell you the history on that one. It, it might well, have I, been. I do have a lot of connection in Shanghai Rotary Club, you know, in China. And I, I have been working with a project with them past five years. They had about 40 Rotary Club now and uh, in China. So if you want me to uh, contact with them, I'm happy to do it. Okay, I'll follow up with you on that one. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, and then the other thing is um, the board, uh, we, we talked about reaching out and requesting proposals from the Park City, Utah area. Um, it was suggested uh, by a member that perhaps we look in the Canyons Village area versus uh, the downtown area. Uh, there's some um, facilities with conference rooms and amenities, ski in, ski out, and ski valets. So. Uh, we'll be reaching out and looking for proposals um, from that area. Um, you would fly into Salt Lake City and um, take a shuttle or rent a car from there. Um, and Park City does have two Rotary Clubs. We were there a little over 10 years ago, I believe, the last time. Um, so if anyone would like to get involved with that process, please let me know. Um, and then again, uh, there's been a recent announcement that the RI convention will be another virtual event in response to the ongoing pandemic. And so we will make similar arrangements for a virtual booth um, it, for 2021 as we did in uh, 2020. And uh, be happy to have anyone that would like to volunteer and uh, get involved in, in helping with that. Uh, effort. And so with that, um, I am going to ask Jeff Penza to uh, get, tell us a little bit more about the Davis Boyd Memorial Foundation and give his annual update. I thank you, Madam President. I do appreciate it. Um, I understand we have a number of um, new members um, or people that haven't been um, to any of our events before. So um, I will give just a quick little overview. Those of you that have heard this before, you probably weren't listening anyway, so you get to listen to it again anyway. Um, but the uh, Davis Boyd Memorial Foundation is a uh, 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we were founded sometime around 1999. Um, and it was honoring um, Davis Boyd, um, who was one of the founders of ISFR. And the mission is to support adaptive ski programs. Next slide, please. So um, some people say, well, why adaptive skiing? And um, the, the reason for that is that um, adaptive ski programs are really um, a therapeutic um, exercise and it reaches a whole wide range of individuals from those individuals that maybe have um, some type of um, physical disability, which you know might include mobility, might include not being able to see, um, might be a hearing impairment. Um, so the idea is um, to provide a uh, therapeutic way um, to um, try and rehabilitate. And I have a quote here from um, Higher Ground, which I think sums it up just very eloquently. And um, what they say is together we bridge the gap between disability and belonging. Um, next slide, please. So some of the grant recipients, um, the way that we um, set up IS or the um, um, fundraising that we do for Davis Boyd is that we, um, each of the places where we ski, um, one of the requirements is that there is a um, adaptive ski program in that, that particular locality. 
So we partner with the local Rotary Clubs and um, raise money and at least half of the money goes towards the um, adaptive ski program where we're visiting. So these are um, all of the places that we've been in the past. Um, next slide, please. Um, we do some um, fundraising and, and issue some grants outside of um, where we visit. And um, one of the goals that the board has really been trying to undertake over um, the past couple of years is to try and really get more of the money out that, um, that we raise every year. Next slide, please. So um, in Telluride, um, we um, um, gave them um, $20,000. This is the presentation of the check um, to Telluride. Um, I think they were pretty happy about what they received. <laughs> Next. So um, in Sun Valley, we raised a, a little over $30,000. Um, for those of you that haven't been to, um, to Ski Week, um, we have a number of events. We have, we have what we call a gala, which is typically on a Thursday night. And um, we have a silent auction, a live auction. And um, one of the wildest things that you've ever seen in your life is our dessert auction, where the local Rotary Clubs will um, um, create really creative desserts. And um, we auction those desserts off. And um, typically the, the highest priced or the most creative dessert will raise perhaps a thousand dollars or so. So it's a really fun event um, and um, we, we have a lot of fun with it. But we also have, um, last year we called it the Higher Ground Challenge, um, which, is, which is basically like a walkathon where you get sponsors to um, um, sponsor you. And again, I've really been pushing this um, for the last few years because it really is a great way to get our local Rotary Clubs um, involved in the fundraising effort. Um, so last year we raised from this challenge, um, again, $11,000. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a great way to, um, again, spread the word of Rotary and um, also about fellowships. Um, our uh, president, Allison Walter, um, has done a great job of publicizing this on um, her Facebook page. And um, I think she has kind of set the challenge, set the bar for the rest of us. Um, I'll talk in a minute here about the Brian Anderson Scholarship Fund, um, but we raised an additional uh, $4,500 for that. So the vertical challenge, again, it's, um, we, we kind of name it based on um, the ski slope where we're, um, where we're um, skiing. Um, so these are some of the past names, Burn the Burn was in Telluride, last year was the Higher Ground Challenge. And again, it, it's a very good way to raise money. And um, we have put together a, um, um, a PowerPoint presentation that can be um, given at your local Rotary Clubs. And it, it talks a little bit about fellowships. Um, it talks about ISFR and it talks about Davis Boyd. And it really is a good tool for um, number one, getting some involvement, um, but also it's a great way to um, pitch what we're doing and raise some funds. Next, please, Madame. Um, so some of the actions that um, we uh, took in the past year, um, we updated the bylaws, um, we adopted some investment guidelines, um, and we um, um, adopted a structure for awarding scholarships for the Brian Anderson Scholarship Foundation. And again, I can talk about that a little bit more. Um, and we agreed to give $27,500 to higher ground. So the majority of the, the funds that we raised did go to the, the local um, adaptive ski program. Um, we also got a, um, a request from higher ground to re reallocate some funds. Um, and um, again, I've got a slide for that as well. Um, I also want to thank Kim Champion, who um, was one of our newer board members um, who stepped off the, uh, the board of directors. Next, please. So Higher Ground came to us um, in October and said, we lost our home. Um, 
Um, due to the pandemic, um, they had their headquarters in the lodge at the base of Dollar Mountain and um, the Dollar Mountain Lodge was closed. So they came to us and asked whether we could um, reallocate some of their money, which typically goes towards funding um, equipment and um, training trainers and that kind of thing. But they asked if we could take some of the money and um, help them build a yurt. Um, so they used $12,000 of, of our donation um, to construct a $50,000 yurt at the base of the mountain. And there it is, the yurt that once it's completed, um, and, and again, this is gonna keep them in business for um, probably the next three or four years They is what they envision staying in this yurt. Next, please. So um, we also formed the um, Brian Anderson, Anders Anderson Scholarship Fund. Um, Brian Anderson was very um, involved um, throughout the years in um, um, the Davis Boyd Memorial Foundation. And um, when he passed away, I believe it was in October of 1917 or 2017, um, we um, looked at ways to honor his name. And what we decided to do was to um, create a scholarship fund. Um, so far, we've raised um, <clears throat> somewhere in the magnitude of um, $12,000. The board agreed to set aside another $10,000 um, towards the scholarship fund. And the idea is to go ahead and uh, grant a scholarship to a needy individual um, in one of the ski resorts and, and again, just to try and keep things simple, we made the decision to um, ask the um, adaptive ski program where ISFR had visited two years prior um, to make a recommendation for somebody to um, receive that scholarship. Next, please. So currently we um, have about $175,000 in the bank. Um, and that does include the um, money that is allocated towards the Brian Anderson, Anderson Scholarship Fund. Why am I having a hard time with that? Um, we have, again, raised $34,000 um, last year from Sun Valley, and we gave twenty seven dollars to Higher Ground Sports. Um, and I, I have to go back and try and look at how much money we have given away. Um, uh, it's well over $250,000 that we have given to programs over the years. Um, next. So we need your help. Um, we always need board members. Um, we do have a finance committee, um, but we could use a little bit more um, help with that. Um, fundraising is something we can always use some help with, as well as future leadership. Um, when we redid the bylaws, we um, put in some term limits, and um, my term limit is coming up in a couple of years. Um, the board is trying to get that to change, but it's not going to happen. Um, and then there's, there's kind of a silent challenge that we're doing this year, um, and we aptly named it the Valley to Peak Challenge, the Valley being 2020 and um, the peak being whatever comes to us in the future. So. Um, our, our president has set up a uh, giving page on the brand new ISFR um, website. So you can go there and um, make a donation. Um, so even though we're not skiing, we can still give. Next, please. Oh, yeah. You want to just stay on that giving part. That's okay. That's, oh, that's all right. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, here is your board, um, Jeff Penza. I am your uh, duly elected president. Um, Gr Bruce Grossman's who I see here, um, all resplendent in a tie I noticed is our vice president. Jim Scott, our treasurer, Mark Dent is here. He, or, uh, Jim Scott is our secretary. Um, Mark Dent, I saw him, he's our treasurer. And then we have Jeff Culp, Bob Rutherford, Emery Sanders and uh, Jeff Strickler. So thank you. Any questions? Just give. <laughs> 
That's good. Okay. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about BAMP. Um, I'm pretty excited about BAMP because I get to check off one of the, my long time bucket list vacation uh, locations. Um, and um, in, if you didn't know, BAMP is, a national, is the national park um, and it is Canada's oldest national park. It was established in 1885 in the Rocky Mountains and it is the third oldest national park in the world. I had the opportunity in early March to do a site visit, as I mentioned earlier, um, got to meet the people um, and check out the locations. Um, so as uh, both have uh, introduced themselves today, um, I met with uh, past district governor, Neil Berg from the Calgary district and Hugh Pettigrew, who was the president of the Rotary Club of Banff. And they'll be assisting with the planning for our trip, along with a Rotary Club of Canmore president, Donna Potter. And I did see she popped in from the ski slopes, I think, for this meeting. So thank you, Donna, for joining us. Um, we will be uh, fly, you fly into the Calgary International Airport, and we will be making arrangements with the Banff Airporter for a uh, shuttle uh, from the airport to BAM. Well, our, head, um, our headquarters hotel will be the Banff Park Lodge. And um, it is uh, right in downtown Banff. Uh, and Banff is a great little uh, quaint village um, that boasts wonderful shopping and, and a a great walkable area, lots of um, restaurants in the area. Um, the town of Banff has an elevation of 1,383 meters or 4,537 feet. Um, and it is the highest town in Canada. And we, we do have special room rates for everyone at the Banff Park Lodge. And then we will be skiing the big three, uh, Banff Sunshine, Lake <coughs> Lake, and Mount Norquay. And they're all available on one, uh, one lift ticket, which we will be um, making uh, discounted lift tickets available. Um, and you can ride a free ski shuttle that picks up right outside the hotel lobby and goes to all three ski hills. Um, you do. You don't have to um, identify which day you're going to which mountain. The the lift ticket covers all three. Um, <coughs> also, there's a beautiful um, view from the top of a gondola ride on Sulphur Mountain, which isn't isn't a ski mountain, but it's another mountain there just outside of the main uh, village. Skiing was introduced uh, to the Banff and Lake Louise area in 1909 by the Swiss and Austrian mountain guides. So we will be opening registration on or about July 1st. And uh, I know that uh, Gaines Bagby can tell you that I said that <laughs> last year <laughs> and it didn't happen, but uh, we, we do plan to do that again this year. So. Um, so that, that is our plan. Oh, um, and our, uh, our adaptive ski uh, program in the area is Rocky Mountain Adaptive. Um, they, they aim to provide children and adults with disabilities, physical, intellectual, cognitive, <laughs> and developmental impairments, the chance to access all the unique sporting and adventure activities in the Canadian Rockies. Um, and I have a, a short video that I just thought um, I would share for those of you that aren't real familiar with um, adaptive ski. This is a great short video.
they keep getting better and better and it's something that I have excelled at as opposed to other areas in my life where they sometimes I struggle through. Um, so it's just, just pure freedom. And she puts those three guys. She doesn't have a disability anymore. Just the, the opportunity to go on hikes and do uh, really cool things out, outdoors in the mountains um, is definitely a huge, a huge benefit. To be able to come here for a, a cheaper cost and then have the volunteers help us out, it's uh, a great experience. As an organization, Rocky Mountain Adaptive Sports Centre, we're not about disability. Our focus is on ability. Um, what we do is we work to provide these opportunities for individuals of amazing and unique ability to be able to come out and participate, learn, and excel at whatever sport and recreation activity they want to. Seeing the, the look of joy and smiles on people's faces, that sense of accomplishment, makes everything we do and the time we put in completely worthwhile. Well, this is a great program. My son can be like a, any other kid, any other 16-year-old kid. He loves to ski. Uh, really enjoys it, and I enjoy skiing with them. It's a program for everyone. It's not exclusive to one, uh, you know, one group, and that's the beauty of it. I don't know of any other program that offers something for everyone. All right. Let's see if I can get out of here for a second. There we go. Um, I had um, a, the, a great opportunity to have dinner with, stop, hold on, sorry about that. All right, well, maybe we won't. There you go. I had an opportunity to have dinner with Jamie when I visited Banff, and he told me about his experience skiing for the first time with his sister who has <coughs> autism, and um, and and what an impact that that had had on his life, um, and and on her life. Um, so he was inspired to establish Rocky Mountain Adaptive, um, and uh, I'm very excited to be able to spend uh, uh, time in uh, in BAMP to uh, support them through our fundraising efforts. I didn't look here at all. Okay. So uh, with that, I will um, I think I think you're unmuted and do you have some something going on in the background there? Not there. Sorry. Rotary. Uh, okay, let me get the down. I appreciate sure I leave it over here. Come on. Come on. He's all right. He's all right. Allison, you can mute from your uh, end, can you not? I cannot. I am not um, actually the host of this meeting. Oh, so, okay. Well, the host uh, can do it. Yeah. All right. Um, so with that, um, I just hope that you're all excited about BAMF and joining us. And um, I am I also just so I'd let you know that I have uh, developed a presentation about fellowships in general, as well as ISFR and our trip to BAMF. And so if your club or anyone that you're um, aware of would, would like to have a speaker, um, I will say I only speak English. I am not uh, uh, fluent in, in other languages well enough to uh, give a, a rotary speech, but um, uh, I did have the opportunity to um, speak to the Rotary Club of Malulaba in <coughs> And um, they, it was very well received, and uh, it um, it was seven o'clock their time, but it was four a.m. my time. So um, 
I am I am committed and I will get up at any time of day or night to do a rotary presentation. So with that, um, that is the, the information that I have to share and um, wonder, I'm happy to answer questions um, if, um, if anyone has any other, any other questions. Allison, this is Debbie and Gordon Cox. Yes. And I wanted to comment that we were the couple that bid on the uh, package to go back to Sun Valley. Yeah. And originally, we were going to go back to Sun Valley in uh, late March, but of course, we had to postpone due to COVID. So we went in December, uh, second week of December, and the ski conditions in Sun Valley were terrific. Uh, and the best part was I joined my sister and her husband and one of her adult sons um, for that week in Sun Valley, and we just had a great time going back. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I was, I'm glad she was very accommodating for you. So, great. The condo was great. The condo, the condo was great. Um, and we got four free lift tickets from um, higher ground. the Higher Ground organization. Um, and somebody threw in some booze and some chocolates. So, you know, what else did we need? We had, we had a great time. Great. Wonderful. And was Sun Valley was your first year joining us? Yes, it was. That was our first to uh, visit Sun Valley. So it turned out we went to Sun Valley twice in the same year. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Peter, do you uh, have a question? Yes, Allison. I wonder if you can give us some idea for those who have not been on one of your weeks before, what the typical weekly cost is. Um, yes. So last year, our registration uh, was four hundred and fifty dollars, um, and that included uh, the gala, the the rotary meeting, the welcome reception, um, breakfast. breakfast breakfast daily. Um, and then you made your own hotel reservations and paid for those and you purchased your lift tickets. But again, both the hotel and the lift tickets are deeply discounted. Um, so that, give, that gives you a kind of a feel for the expense. Is that helpful? That's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? All right. Um, Allison, I thought um, for the benefit of, of those who have not been on, on one of the ski weeks, um, maybe you could just provide a, a short summary of kind of what we do day by day. I mean, it, it seems like every night, every night there's a planned activity to go dining with people or cocktail hours or whatever. Absolutely. Why don't you talk through that for a minute while I get up, while I get to the slide that I created with that information. Can you do that for me? Uh, oh, okay. Well, I, I was on mute. Okay, so yeah, I can I can talk about it a little bit. Um, my my husband and I have been on I think uh, four four of these um, trips and just had a terrific time and met a lot of wonderful people that we still stay in touch with. Um, but um, you know, there there's an opportunity every evening. You know, there's uh, I think it starts with like a a welcome reception like a cocktail, a really nice cocktail party. And there's a rich home thing. Yeah, and then there's home hospitality, which which some years we, you you went to a local host Rotarian's home, um, you know, with sort of groups of maybe six people. Um, other times, I think when we were in Sun Valley, uh, we were hosted, the local clubs hosted us at, at a restaurant, which was kind of ours for the evening. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And there's a diner around that you organized last year right and then usually sort of like on a tuesday night um a dine around is organized so we make reservations for sort of hmm, 12 to 20 people at local restaurants and you sign up to go to a particular restaurant um again another another nice um you can hand it back now. um thing i'll okay. hand it back to you now okay okay <laughs> perfect um 
the mountain tours with local Rotarian guides, that's wonderful because uh, Sunday, Monday, um, you we have local Rotarians that meet you at the base of the hill and we'll take you um, for half a day, all day, um, get to see the, the locals view of the mountain, um, which is wonderful. And another great way to uh, get to know both the community and, and the Rot Rotarians. Um, this annual general meeting is always um, uh, occurs during our ski week. Uh, we hold a joint Rotary meeting with um, the clubs in the area. Um, so Banff and Canmore will have a, a joint Rotary meeting. Um, and we also always try to have um, some diverse activities and tours for non-skiers and skiers. Um, uh, things have included um, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, um, historical tours. Um, when we were at the Fairmont in Whistler, they got to see um, the, the back of the house kitchen uh, where they make all the amazing desserts. Um, and then, of course, um, as Jeff mentioned, our closing gala on Thursday evening with the silent auction a live auction, a dessert auction, um, all benefiting uh, the foundation. And we do ask people to bring um, unique items from their part of the world to put on those auctions. Um, and as uh, Debbie mentioned, um, people will um, auction, you know, offer uh, ski, ski weeks at, in their area or um, the Coronado uh, Rotary Club always hosts a wonderful or offers up a wonderful um, week in Coronado um, with their club. Um, so with that being said, the next one, the next request, the next slide is your, we need your help. <laughs> um, started last year with um, this uh, committee structure and had some wonderful people step up and um, help with the planning. And then we will connect you with uh, a local Rotarian from each of the local clubs to create a committee to help organize some of these activities. Um, including we had a fabulous photographer last year that uh, you, you had to be careful because you never knew if, when you turn around if he was gonna be taking your picture and putting it on Facebook. But, you know, we just need involvement from everyone to make it a great success um, for, for all of us. So um, with that, please um, renew your membership if you have not, um, or join if you are not um, already a member. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next year in Banff in February. Here's my uh, contact information. I use the ISFRC at Gmail email um, on a daily basis. So don't hesitate to reach out with questions or comments or suggestions or um, et cetera, et cetera. And this um, has been being recorded. And so it will be up on our website. If you have people that you think might be interested, feel free to send them to our website and they can learn a little bit more about us through this meeting. Any other questions for the, for the group or myself? Allison, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I would agree with that too. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I couldn't do it without all of uh, you board members who chip in and your volunteer, committee volunteers. So thank you very much. Allison, can we see all the pictures again? Can we see all the pictures again? Well, uh, I only see you and me. I, I just want to see everybody that's on there. Oh, hey, uh, OK, I gotcha. It off. Gotcha. I will unshare. Oh, wait, let's see. How do thank I do that? You. Stop sharing. All right, there we go. So we, we still have 42 Great. people online. There's Abby. Um, Great job, Allison. You're doing oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, so Abby. We have um, a variety of uh, countries here. If anyone's interested, we've got another UK member, we, uh, John Hodge from the UK. Um, 
We have Albert on from, where are you from, Albert? I can't remember. Spacebar. We have a, a couple people. Albert is from Vienna. Vienna, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Nicholas, are you, did I see Italy? Yes, yes. Wonderful. From Italy, from the Alps in Italy. Wonderful. Neil Urquhart, where are you from? Hi, good evening. Uh, Scotland. Scotland. Wonderful. Wonderful. We have Kurt from Calgary. Irene's from Germany. Anyone else here? Oh, Paolo, you, where are you from? Glad meeting. Oh, Paolo, we're not hearing you. Sydney, Australia. Sydney, okay, wonderful. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today. <clears throat> and um, we'll, we look forward to, hear, to hearing from you and seeing you in BAM. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Allison. Well done, Allison. Thank you. We are looking forward to host to having you all welcome in Banff and this is Hugh speaking and we're uh, very excited about this uh, trip coming up and uh, uh, we'll do our best to make it even more fun than Allison can do but that's okay I think she's got it all figured <laughs> out thank you thank you Neil it was fun to meet you can't wait to get together again take care everybody good luck to everyone bye bye bye, -bye. bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.